Hey, what's going on everyone? Hawks21 here, back with another Splinterlands video. So a little housekeeping to get us started. Um, I've gotten a few requests for some sort of video, like kind of like a deck building strategy video for those in bronze, you know, like what are some of the best cards to buy um, and what are some of the best ways to like spend your first hundred dollars or stuff like that. So those videos are coming. I'm going to start touching more on that stuff. And this is sort of going to be the first introduction to that. Um, you know, this, this video right now is going to be more why I think it's the perfect time to move up versus how to best move up. There's going to be a little bit of that, but within the next week or so, I'm going to have two separate videos come out on top of this one. The first being sort of a step-by-step -step deck building guide of sort of, you know, if you started in bronze right now, here's what I would do if I was you you know, sort of step one, step two, step three. Um, and then also another video I'm going to do will be sort of the first, like I have a hundred dollars to spend. I'm in bronze. How do I spend it? So those two videos are coming. I know a lot of people have asked me that. So I want to get that covered. I just want to take some time and really organize it um, and make sure I'm giving you all the best information, but it's something I'm thinking about actively and, you know, content related to that is certainly coming. And this video is kind of related to that as we sort of move to the point of why I'm here right now, which is if you're looking to move up to silver or gold or diamond, basically if, you, if you're looking to move up to the next league, I think right now is the perfect time. So little disclaimer, you know, this is my own personal opinion and I'm sure some of you will disagree with me. And secondly, you know, what I'm about to say is mostly for people who, you know, have the money to invest into Splinterlands, but they're unsure if they want to, right? So, you know, they have a couple hundred dollars, maybe even a couple thousand dollars, and they're sitting there being like, uh, I've seen card prices go down. My rewards at bronze starting out the game isn't great. Um, I don't know if this is where I want to put sort of my crypto investing money or my NFT investing money or my gaming investing money. This is sort of my video to pitch you that this is a great time to use that money um, within Splinterlands. Again, not financial advice, it's just my own personal opinion. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts as well below. Um, I'm sure some people are gonna disagree with me. And I do understand that, you know, not everyone has money to spend to put into a video game and some people are playing for fun. Um, and so, you know, if you're one of those people where, you know, you truly can't get money into this game for, because of your own personal situation. Like, I don't take that for granted. I fully understand that. This video, while I think we'll have some helpful information in it, just probably isn't geared towards you. Um, I think you'll learn some stuff, but when I'm talking about sort of investing into this game, I fully recognize that not everyone can do that. All right, let's get started. So, a couple things I wanna cover first. I've seen some people in bronze, and what I'm gonna talk a lot about this video is bronze to silver and silver to gold movement. I'm currently in gold, so I don't really know the gold to diamond move yet. I just got sort of a maxed gold deck that I'm comfortable with, so I'm gonna play with this for a while. Um, and as I sort of rotate assets out of Chaos Legion packs and stuff like that, that's when I'll probably make the move up to diamond. But for now, I mostly am talking about bronze to silver and then silver to gold. So I've had a few comments from players in bronze about how they never get loot uh, cards in their loot chests, whether that be season rewards or um, you know their daily loot chests. And my response is kind of, that's on purpose. So, and it's set up that way, which I'll show you in a second. Splinterlands is not free to play. Uh, it is, or it is technically free to play, but if you wanna earn, it's a play to earn game, right? And I think people get confused as play to earn as, no investment is required. And for some games that's true, but there's a reason why they're not as popular as Splinterlands because they're not developed as well. Part of the reason why Splinterlands is so great and so popular is because they've developed this system where the more you play and the better you get, the more you earn. That's what pe gets people like, coming back over and over and over again. Because the game also gets more fun as you progress up through higher levels. But back to the cards not being in loot chests. That is by design. So let's go to the league tab first. We'll start in bronze. 
And if you're in bronze three, we're gonna go to splinter cards actually. Tools, if we go to loot chest value, I'm glad I introduced these tools because you're gonna see them more and more now. We're gonna hit the drop percentages. So if you're in novice or bronze three, every chest you get only has a 10% chance of being a card. 45% potion, 45% credits. You don't even earn DEC until silver. If you move up to bronze two, 20% chance to get a card. If you move up to bronze three, 30% chance of getting a card. Then once you get above silver, uh, silver and higher, it's 50% across the board. So every loot chest you open at silver three or higher, there is a 50% chance it will be a card, which is great because that adds to your collection power. It's more like usable. It's more, it's a usable card you can use to win games and win more DEC, which sort of starts the compounding process. And you can see they added the pack stuff here too, which I'll touch on in a second. So there really is a big barrier here where it's like, if you can get into silver three, you're going to start getting more and more cards. So like, let's just go back here, right? So bronze three has a 10% chance of any one of the loot chests being a card. If you're getting five season reward chests, right? You would average half of a card at the end of every season. You know, obviously you can't get half of a card, but if you were to go through a hundred seasons, on average, you would get one card every other season. That's not a lot, right? Moving up to bronze two, 20% chance, seven loot chests. So you're getting a higher chance of cards and more loot chests. You take the 20%, 0.2 times seven, you'd be expecting 1.4 cards per, you know, every season in your season rewards. Already a lot higher, right? That's almost a full card average that you'd expect higher. Go here, 0.3 times nine, and that's even higher. You're looking at 2.7 cards per season. So think about that. Even within bronze itself, without even having to go all the way to silver, half of a card every single season, 2.7 cards every single season. And you do make the jump to silver, 50%. You're talking about six cards per season. 12 chests, 50% chance. On average, you'd expect six cards. That is a huge difference. And what does that do? Let's, let's go look at the rewards cards for a second. I've barely purchased any of the rewards cards, um, specifically the common ones. I've just been stacking them as I've got, as I've received them. Um, I know I haven't purchased any Gargoyle Lions. And look at this. So this is all I've gotten from chests since the cards have come out. So 500, almost 600 DEC right here. Collection power that has been given to me because of these cards. So the more frequently you're able to get cards, the more likely it is that you're going to sort of start stacking collection power and moving up to higher and higher leagues and earning more and more rewards. It's like it's, you know, it's a self-fulfilling cycle where once you sort of get over that silver three hump, the growth starts becoming sort of exponential as you get more and more cards and leveling up your collection power naturally without having to put a ton of money into the game. Obviously it's slow, right? Like I think it's five per, you're only getting five collection power per. But over the sport, uh, you know, over the span of a couple seasons, you'll probably collect, you know, a couple hundred. You'll get lucky sometimes, maybe get a rare, an epic, or a legendary. Maybe get a gold card. Um, you'll start, sort of, this will start adding up, as well as your collection power increases, your SPS airdrop increases. You'll get more SPS per day, which you could then sell and put into more cards or stake to get more SPS, whatever you wanted to do. Early on, I would suggest. Maybe consider selling it to buy more cards so you can get up into silver if you're not there yet. Um, so yeah, you really need to move up to silver in order to start getting more and more cards because it's designed right now not to reward you at cards at bronze because the game developers want you to put in some sort of investment of money uh, and your time in order to start seeing those rewards. Now, the other reason why I think now is a great time to get in is because of the card prices. We'll start with the summoners, but there are two sort of uh, things I want to look at. So if you go to summoners, again, peak monsters, tool I talked about in my beginner's guide series video, which you're going to start seeing more and more uh, in these videos now that I've introduced it. Summoners are sort of the key to unlocking higher level cards, which again, we've already talked about. 
and they're really cheap right now, right? So like if you've leveled up a bunch of cards for the silver level, but you only have a level one summoner, you can't play them at the higher levels. So this is where everything starts. They don't have the best deals of collection power $2, which I, which is what we'll touch on next, but you're going to need these guys at some point. So if you have the money to invest and you need to level up your summoners, now is the perfect time to do it. These summoners are almost as cheap as when I joined like six months ago. Again, untamed, there were less, um, there are some really cheap untamed ones right here as well. But we're talking under $3 for General Sloan, which certainly isn't my favorite summoner, but I think it's very undervalued. Thaddeus Brood, who is actually one of my favorite Chaos Legion summoners, a little over $3. Obsidian has fallen under $4. So these are really, really cheap summoner cards, and now is a great opportunity for you to pick some of them up. I mean, Pyre, the plus one speed. Um, you know, these are obviously high level costs, but for under $4, you can pick up five, 10 of these, right? And that's getting close to the level three. You can play level four at silver, but even if you get level three, right, it's gonna unlock some higher levels of the cards you can use, right? Like a level three unlocks a level two legendary. So even if you can't max it out for silver, it just provides you an opportunity to start using more leveled up cards, which is gonna help you win more games. The other thing I wanna look at, if you go to compare here, so what I just did up in this top right, hit compare. This is a really cool feature. Right now it's by low price. You can compare by anything. So I'm gonna compare by best CP to cost ratio. This is just doing summoners. I want all cards for this point. So back when I first started playing, a doll, uh, like anything over 150 collection power per dollar was a must buy. A lot of stuff was around like 120, 130. When anything ever got to 150, people would just immediately buy it up. But now these new cards are consistently sitting at 170 collection power per dollar spent. And now these are by no means the best cards in the game. But if you're looking to level up your collection power, this is a great place to start. And some of these cards are great tanks for you to use. This Pelgor Deceiver, for example. At silver, um, even before silver, uh, I think you can play level three at bronze if you have a leveled up summoner to level two. Um, two attack, four speed, eight health with flying. Again, by no means a like carry card or anything like that. This is a really quality tank for only five mana cost that you're going to be able to play and get cheaply, right? Three cents. If you were to like, let's, let's do a little math. I'm going to do a little, oh, I didn't mean to add that to my cart. I have a bunch of these. I don't need to buy any more. Although I actually might come back later and look at some of this stuff. Um, as I start thinking about moving up to diamond, I'm going to pull out a calculator and do a little off screen math. Basically, if you're talking about three cents and you need 60 of them to max for silver, that's a dollar eighty. So for a dollar eighty, you can get a max silver version of Pelicor Deceiver. A dollar eighty. So you're then you're going to take the 166 collection power per dollar times the dollar eighty. That's almost 300 collection power for a card you're gonna use all the time early on in silver once you get there, right? So it's adding value to your deck in a playable card, as well as giving you a bunch of collection power per dollar, one of the best deals in the game. That's true of the Gargoyle Lion too, a neutral tank that you'll be able to play with any summoner. Again, by no means my favorite card, but maxed at silver, two attack, also flying, void, some shield, decent health, not great speed, but you know, again, not one of my favorite cards, but a very useful card. Pelicor Deceiver, same thing in the life deck. If you pick up General Sloan, you get this to five. It is a two mana card that has good speed, flying, good health, and magic reflect. It's going to be a nice tank for low mana games that you can put up there. It's going to get you some dodges. It's going to reflect some magic. It's a really useful card. I actually play that card a lot. Pelicor Mercenary, same thing. Great little tank. Uh, for silver and bronze. High hit points, flying, uh, good attack. Gregoria Devil, a rare card, neutral. Uh, if you level it up to level three, it's gonna pick up a third attack. If you have a leveled up General Sloan, all of a sudden this thing's hitting for four, sitting in your back line. 
has close range, can still attack when it moves up to the front. So there are some very useful cards right here at great collection power to cost deals that I think you need to think about taking advantage of, even though they're not the best cards in the game. They're very useful cards that early on are great ways for you to get playable cards to boost your deck. And I don't think these deals are going to be around forever for the next reason that I'm going to touch on, which was going back to this article that came out, which was the Ranked Battle Reward System Updates. We talked about this quickly um, in a previous video because of the booster packs being added to the drops, so your daily loot chest and your season loot chests. But I want to come back to this because I've read it closer and I think there's some interesting things. Mainly these three bullets right here. So reduce the ability to farm rewards using a small set of cards across many different accounts. So what does that mean? Right now, some people, how they're utilizing and playing the game, is to make a ton of bronze accounts or a ton of silver accounts and just grind those and get sort of like a bunch of individual accounts that get like one or two chests and just immediately sell everything and keep doing it over and over and over and over again. They want to stop that. You'll be able to have more accounts, but they want to make it more rewarding for you to have one account that's in a higher league where you get to play it a bunch. So to me, that means they're going to start skewing the rewards league to league even more than they already have in terms of the cards, right? Because it's easier to do the multiple account strategy in the lower leagues because it's less of an investment to create the multiple accounts. In bronze, you could do this multiple account farming strategy by putting barely any money into like a ton of different accounts. You buy the $10 spell book, you hit sort of like put in $5 and you can probably get to like bronze two at least. And all you do is farm rewards um, with as many accounts as you want. In silver, it gets a little more costly, right? Because you need the 15,000 uh, collection power. Still doable. I know a few people who play with multiple accounts in silver who just farm rewards and don't want to sort of move into gold or even move into diamond, right? So they decide to do that. They want to make it more difficult for you to do that. And the only way in my head for that to happen is make it more advantageous for you to combine all of those accounts into one account. So what that means is the higher league you go, the more skewed the rewards are going to continue to get. So I think this is a trend that you're going to see, I don't want to say get worse, but can, it's a trend that's going to continue trending, if that makes sense. Second, increase the rewards for participating in the ranked season ladder. DEC, so I don't know if this means DEC per battle or DEC for um, you know where you finish on the leaderboard, if that's something you chase. I personally don't. Um, at least not yet, because i am just moved into gold. But probably both, to be honest. Increase quest rewards and increase season rewards across all leagues. Again, this is an area where I think they're going to skew it towards the higher leagues. I don't see them really giving a big boost to bronze. Um, because that's just going to incentivize the first behavior, right? Which they're also trying to eliminate. So to me, what this says is... This is going to be mainly focused on higher leagues. I'm sure silver will get a boost because they'll want people to pull up from bronze into silver. I think gold gets a boost because boost, they're going to want to pull uh, silver into gold. Basically, they want to pull people down the line into the higher leagues. And then finally, provide incentives for players to continue playing on a daily basis beyond the wins needed for the daily quest and provide incentives for players to continue playing after ha having achieved a high league in the current season. So basically what's happening right now, and I do this as well, is I play a bunch early in the season when DEC, DEC rewards are high. Then once I hit gold one and DEC rewards have sort of decreased, I don't play anymore. I hit my daily quest every single day and that's about it. I let my ECR build back up and then I do the same the next season. So they want it to be you know advantageous for me and players like me to keep playing, which right now it's just not, right? Like, by the end of the season in gold, I'm getting 8 DEC per win, which is great. Um, but it's just not worth me sitting there playing, you know, 20, 30 games a day when I can save my ECR and make, you know, 50, 60, 70 DEC at the beginning of gold seasons. So what all of this says is it's going to be more advantageous for you to move into higher leagues. How do you do that? You have to buy cards, get the collection power to qualify for the higher leagues. So these deals that you see right now are going to disappear as more and more people 
try to move up to the higher leagues and buy up these cards for the cheap collection power to cost ratio. So it's kind of what I'm saying, like right now you can get really cheap summoners, you can get really cheap cards, and I think it's going to be a limited time as they rework this reward system that encourages you to move up. So if you're sitting on the fence and you're like, I don't know if I want to invest into this game, there could be a variety of reasons why you don't, and you might ultimately decide not to. But if you are going to invest, I think right now is a particularly good time to think about doing so. And then finally, with these packs, we've already seen sort of a tiered system beyond bronze. So until this point, we had only seen a tiered system in bronze, sort of what we already talked about, the decreased card drop rate per packs. Well, here you can see the pack rate, sorry, per loot chest. Right now, the per pack percent chances is skewed in every single sub league slash tier all the way from silver three to champion one. So even within diamond, right? Like it's advantageous to move up to diamond two, which then becomes advantageous to move up to diamond one. So it's always in your favor to keep moving up. And I think they're only going to start doing that more and more and more. So as they do that, more people are going to be incentivized to move up. People are going to have to buy cards and it's just going to put prices higher. I don't know when this is going to happen. I don't know when they're going to start implementing these changes, but they haven't yet. Right. And it, stuff could certainly still go lower from here. And, you know, maybe that's your point of going in. Maybe we see a 10 to 20% drop in cards or something. I, I think that's unlikely for the lower cards because then you're getting close to sort of the DEC burn value of the cards. Um, in which case you could just buy all the cheap ones and burn them for DEC and make money. So I don't think we're going to get that low. Um, but maybe that's your point, right? Like it could get a little worse before it starts getting better. But I think everything's lined up for, you know, this new reward system that they're going to roll out to really encourage people to move up. The final point I want to make is that the game is just more fun as you move up to higher levels. A lot of people grind out bronze and in bronze, right, you play the same two to three, maybe four different lineups, spamming them over and over and over and over again. And your opponents play the same lineups as well. So a lot of times you're just playing the same lineups. You know, that's not fun, right? Like, you know exactly what you're going to play and there's no like strategy or thinking involved. There's like two or three options. Once you start, once you move up to silver and all of these new abilities and card levels are unlocked, the strategies, you know, start multiplying exponentially. You, you, you like, there's so many different ways to build out a successful lineup. There's so much like thought process that needs to go into what you're playing. And that just doesn't exist at the bronze level. Um, you know, in gold, it gets even crazier. Like I just moved into gold and there are like, even beyond silver, right? Where silver picks up a bunch of abilities, gold picks up an insane amount of abilities and cards start getting really powerful. The game gets really challenging and fun. Um, you know, and I actually enjoy waking up every day and like trying to complete my daily quest. Where When I was playing in bronze uh, and low level silver, that wasn't the case for me because I knew I was gonna play the same exact lineup over and over and over again. It's very rare that I'm able to spam, you know, similar lineups multiple times in a day, just based on rule sets, what my opponents are playing. It just makes it a much more fun game. So like, ultimately that's what this is, right? It's a game. If you don't have fun playing it, you're not gonna last long enough to like see the rewards. So if you're not having fun, which to me, I would argue bronze is just, was just not, it's just not that fun. And that's partly why they're encouraging people to try to move higher. It's sort of just like a tutorial league. Um, you know, it's something you want to think about because to play a long time, it needs to be fun for you. And the higher you go, the more fun it is. All right, I'm gonna cut there. It's a pretty long video. Again, this is sort of the beginning of what I'm going to talk about in terms of like deck building, cards to buy to move up to the next level. This was sort of the why I think you can move up and why I think it's a really good time to do so. Uh, if you enjoyed the content or if you learned anything new, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree with me. Like, what do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? Um, you know, I look forward to having these conversations and debates with you, whether here or on Twitter, Hawks21 Gaming on Twitter. Uh, feel free to give me a follow or talk to me there. And let's get into it. I mean, that's how I learn a lot about this game too, is like participating in these conversations with you guys. You've had some great comments here. Um, so let me know what you think. 
All right, I really appreciate you being here. Have a great day.